Hi, everybody. Hey, um, I might have had a little change of plans here on the mini home. I think I, uh, I'm going to put it on the trailer. Um, I got to thinking about how I would move this after I built it and, uh, you know, the legalities of it, putting it on a piece of property and how much more trouble that would be for somebody or myself to, uh, to put it on a piece of property. So I figured if it was on wheels and it was mobile, it would be better. And that's the way they're building most of the mini homes right now anyway. So I, I kind of changed my mind on this. Um, give me a second here. So I'm not going to be using this after all right here. I've been cleaning up a little bit of um, some old shelves and stuff, took them all apart. Uh, it is plywood. I figured I could use it for something. But I've been cleaning up around in here and uh, I've come up with a different plan here. Now my trailer was full of stuff here. I have it all stacked up over there now. But I thought I would utilize this trailer. This is a uh, 16 foot car trailer. So naturally my building would be a slightly bit smaller and I think it's uh, 79 inches wide. Yeah, I think that's what it was, but it's got a new deck on it now and it's a, uh, it's got that big cedar deck put on it. The only thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to come through here and uh, let's see here. You can see from the, right there that this back right here slopes downward. And what I'm going to have to do is right here, right here on this back rail, I'm going to have to weld, weld in a uh, one inch high piece of uh, some type of uh, square tubing. Then you can see how the lumber it kind of pushes up into a C-channel. I'm going to have to put a little piece of C-channel on top of that or an L channel and, put, and raise my wood back up on the back here. I would leave it in that channel over there, but I would raise it up and put it in this channel, the new channel I would build on that one inch riser, which would bring the top of the boards up three inches. And that would make it level. And um, I can reuse all this lumber, all but this one piece that I have split. I'll have to uh, go cut another piece out of the uh, out of the lumber that I have because I have a little bit more of this, and um, yeah, it's only a four-foot section. But anyway, that'll level the whole back of this thing, so I'll have a 16-foot home here, a little mini home. Um, now I can do the sides two ways. I can bring it out to eight foot just by building out a, uh, a two by six floor here and bring it out another, you know, nine or 10 inches on each side. And that would give me my full, my full uh, eight inch width on this. Or I could build a stub wall right here, a little short wall and build it out then up like a like an old style Vardo that you would see. Um, but I would not put the, the, the rounded Vardo roof on it. I would go ahead and um, come up here, put me a landing in there about 80 inches that I'd have a, a sleeping platform there. And right here and right here, I would have twin beds. So it would have a sleeping platform up on the top that would be eight feet wide and about 42 inches high and I would have two twin beds down here and the reason I'm doing that is because if I put twin beds in here I want them adjustable I want a two adjustable twin beds and um, I also found some more windows and I found a door so uh, yeah I've got a little bit of work to do here so that's the first thing I have to do right there then I have to make up my mind on how I'm going to build the side walls, whether I'm going to build a, a straight wall and build a subfloor in here. If I put a subfloor in here, I could insulate it real well, but it would raise the whole thing up six inches and my, uh, my upper room would be uh, six inches shorter. So, you know, I'm not liking that idea. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to still give this some thought. I've been doing a lot of drawings, uh, a lot of preparations. 
I haven't been sitting on my duff here. I've been trying to do some stuff here, trying to trying to get this figured out. Um, but so far, I think that's the plan. We're going to put it on this car trailer. This car trailer is uh, fairly heavy duty. It's got decent tires on it, and I just cleaned the framing up on it and and uh, spray painted it. Um, I saw a little some bubbling here that's coming back. I'm going to have to fix that. And down there in between the fender wells, um, I'm going to have to cut a little piece of uh, rusty sheet metal from the inner liner on that fender. And I think I might have to do the same thing on the other side. So I want to do all this prep work first before I start building on it. But this is a good, strong trailer. And I think it'll hold the mini home. Yeah, you can see a little spot right there I got to fix on this side too. But let me show you what else I found over here. I found some doors. Well, a door and a couple of windows. I may or may not use this depending on what my doorway ends up being. You can see it right here. There's an exterior door there. That was on that cabin I had over in Hayfort, California that I tore down. And uh, I got to snoop around over here. Let me let me try to get some footing here. And I can show you the windows. There they are. The three foot wide. And I think they're four foot tall. They might be five foot. I'm not sure. I need to get a tape measure out and measure those. Yeah, I think they might be five foot, three foot by five foot windows. But they got screens in them and they're in really good shape. So, um, yep. Getting my work cut out for me here. I really want to start nailing these walls together and, and and doing this thing because it sounds really exciting to me to do it. Uh, yeah, you can see see how far up I got to go here to make that level. It's got to come up three inches there. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm going to enjoy this. So. Um, I'll bring you back when I figure out something else on this. All right, everybody. There's the uh, back of the trailer. Let me level this out for you. There we go. And um, the back of this trailer slopes off the rear because it was a car trailer. It drops right down here about three inches. And I had thought about welding on uh, a piece of C-channel so I can raise up these the back of these boards right here up a little bit and level it and use the same C-channel design that where the boards are tucked in here. But I checked on it. It's going to cost me um, probably a couple hundred dollars. And I'm trying to do this without spending a bunch of money. So I came up with a different design back there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to um, string uh, two by sixes back there and build, build right back here a back wall where the two by sixes can nail into nail them into a little header back there and that will level that will level this whole playing field right here and this is what I'm going to do up front let me crick it again there we go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build me a subfloor right here and I'm going to build it out of two by six and I'm going to extend this will be a full section piece here I'm going to do that. I'm going to extend it, extend it out 10 inches on both sides, which will make it a complete 8 foot wide. And um, there will be one here every 2 feet until we get back here. And um, that way I can insulate the floor. I know it's going to raise the floor up 6 inches, and it might goof me up on my two-story idea, you know, having a loft. But instead of having a loft uh, on this side here, I could... Um, Go ahead right over here and uh, put a bunk system in then put a single uh, single twin on this side and that's the way it would still sleep three people then um, we would have a uh, 
um, a bathroom and shower back on this side, a little bit of kitchen room over here, right here, a little bit of shelf room here, then there'd be a, a bathroom, then a shower in the back corner there. And it'd have a rear door right there. And on this side right here, this area where the, between that board and right here, this is like five foot, four inches or seven inches. Um, that would be the kitchen area right there. That's where the sink and everything go. We'd probably put the refrigerator right over here in a cabinet. But um, first thing I got to do here is uh, so I got to cut this guy off right here. That's where my old winch mounted uh, for pulling up cars onto this trailer back when I used it for that. And um, I got to take that grinder right there with a cutoff wheel on it. I'm going to cut that thing off and get it out of my way. And um, the rest of these pockets, I've devised a way of uh, putting a board down into them, running a bolt through them, and hooking, hooking them into the front panel here. And that would hold the whole house down because they're all over the whole outside of this. And that way, the house would be basically free floating on this trailer, hooked down by all these supports. And if I ever wanted to take the house off the trailer, it might be just a matter of cutting all those loose and sliding it off the back. But um, we'll, we'll see what we need to do. But for right now, that's the way I'm going to build it, right like that. I'm going to, have, I'm going to fill in both of these sides here right up to the width of the fender. I'm going to do that on the other side too. And I'm going to do it back here. And on these fenders, I'm going to build over them with a header. That way I can stud my walls on top. So that's the plan. I'm going to get busy. All right, I set some uh, um, fiberglass panels up on both sides to keep the sparks from flying around. Don't want to light anything on fire in here. And I'm going to cut this thing loose. Then I'm going to start building that floor. After I build that floor, I'm going to level the whole trailer. Make sure it's level all the way around and um, that way when I go to set my walls up it's going to be uh, nice and square. very careful with that. Um, I suggest not doing it this way. Um, I've just been doing it like this for years and uh, these don't fit inside a guard so that's almost sliced off there. I'm gonna when I get this um, cut through the rest of the way and off I'll bring you guys back okay you don't need to watch me do all this. All right, I got that dude off of there. There she sits. So, I gotta watch this area. It sparked around a little bit. I wanna make sure I don't have a fire later. But there's where it was. I'd like to kick the guy in the butt that welded that on there. Kinda of overdid it a little bit, but I, yeah, my foot doesn't reach that high. <laughs> uh, I guess I got carried away when I put that thing on there. But anyway, next I'm going to clean up this mess and I'm going to start putting these boards across here every two feet. 
Nice thing about having a six inch floor, I can insulate it well. And I also can run plumbing under there and electrical. And um, that'll work out pretty good, I think. So on to the next step here. Well, I primed and painted that front piece so it wouldn't rust. Didn't want to leave all that bare metal there. And I just shot it with a high performance enamel, Rust-Oleum, same stuff I, I used to paint the trailer with. And I uh, just stuck some of this Spies Hacker Automotive Primer underneath it to make sure. And um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweep off this whole deck and there's a roll of uh, 30 pound felt paper over there. I'm gonna felt paper this whole top of this deck and I'm gonna you know, leave a more, little more than 10 inches hanging out this side on each side to make sure we can wrap up underneath on the exposed part of the floor, you know, keep that waterproof. And then I'm going to cap that with some, um, uh, on the underside with some plywood. So that'll work good. And remember this, guys, um, this little uh, house is going to be built out of about 90% all recycled stuff that I have in this shop. I don't think I'm going to have to buy anything. I'm going to make it a point not to buy anything for this. I'm going to try to do everything except for maybe the roofing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do the roofing in here. Um, but I think I can get most of it. I've got water lines, electrical, all sorts of stuff I could use here. I've got electric boxes, everything. So I should be able to build it out of what I have in the shop here. Just all this stuff I've collected over the years. And um, since it's not going to be a second-hand store, might as well build something out of it and sell the rest of it. So, uh, I guess we're on our way. Look how little that roll is now. I went ahead and decked the whole, I mean, uh, put a vapor barrier on that whole deck. So when I build the flooring on top of this, the, the two by six floor joists on top of this, they will, uh, not get any moisture to them and besides that when I put my uh, insulation down here on the floor it also will not get any moisture so uh, we got these where we can lap them underneath the edge because see there's no no decking under this part that will um, staple up underneath the uh, the floor joist extensions coming out on both sides and then it'll get a piece of plywood over it and painted so that should be uh, pretty solid. It'll have that sandwiched in as a vapor barrier, you know. Same with on the back. And these fenders will actually be hidden into the wall as you, as you build this thing. But anyway, I got a little ways today. And um, next thing I got to do is go over there. That's going to be my workstation. Um, I'll probably going to build walls on the floor there on that deck and uh, move them over here to this and build them on, on, on site. But first I got to get the deck built first, the, the floor joists in. I'm getting ahead of myself there. But I, for right now, I'm going to set me up a saw over there and that's going to be my cutting station. And uh, that's what's next. I'm going to get this floor put in. And um, I've still got a little bit more planning to do. I've got to crawl under this thing and check where the cross braces are, figure out where my toilet's going to be, where my shower drain is over here where my uh, sink drain's going to be. And um, yeah, I got to make sure this thing's all planned out properly. All right, guys. Um, I'll catch you later then, okay? Hey, I'm back again, guys. I've uh, been working on it a little bit more. Um, I have came up with a funny little name for it, though. Since I'm putting, uh, you know, so many uh, used and recycled and salvaged pieces into this thing. I was gonna, thought maybe Hodgepodge Lodge would be a good name for it. <laughs> Here, let me show you what I'm doing to it. Okay, I've started in on the uh, floor, the floor joists. And um, I got the front one on. I've got this one doubled up where it should be. That's what the, where the wall's gonna sit. I gotta put the flooring in first. Then you can see I have it set up to where I can put another one here on the outside and that'll go down and reinforce the whole thing. Then uh, 
I'm going to double it up on the back one there too because this corner here is going to support uh, a, um, like a beam going over the fender so I can mount the, the wall to the beam and uh, that way it's supported. But um, yeah, I'm putting on a two foot centers. I will put a brace in between here too, make sure it's really solid. And um, right here, I don't have the, uh, the next one in here because this one, I wanted room to nail in this way. I'm building this floor in three sections. This is gonna be the front section. And this area in here is gonna be like the kitchen section. And they're gonna be running this way. Then on the back section here, from the, from the back of the fender right here, it's going to uh, be running back this way again because they have to hang out this way to support the overhang. And uh, I'll just be nailing it in this way. So, yeah, that's where I got today. There was a lot of hunting down things like my air nailer and uh, finding some uh, proper nails for it. I have uh, about a dozen or so boxes of nails, but none of them were fitting my other air nailer. So, because uh, these were too long. These are three and a quarter inch nails, and my other one could only take three inch nails. So, I had to go out and get the said, put the other one away and get my old Senko gun out. But it's going together pretty good so far. Um, I've got me a, a chop saw over here. Got me a little setup here. And uh, there's my support. I'm going to start digging into this bunch of lumber right over here next. And um, the lumber that was right here, I sorted it and used all of it so far. I had one piece that I couldn't use. I found it was kind of punky in the middle and I didn't want to use that. And I've still got three more on the floor right here I can use. But, um, you know, the, the lumber doesn't look too bad. Not really bad at all. You can see from the cross cut there. See, that's very good lumber. I mean, it's just uh, recycled, recycled lumber. It's got an old nail holes in it. See right here, it's got old nail holes in it. Well, I got a little bit more done here and uh, I'm uh, kind of hot right now and I kind of pulled my back a little bit. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I hopped off this, uh, I had to get up on top of it for a minute and when I hopped down, I just kind of tweaked something. So. I'm not feeling too good right at the moment, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you this last little bit here, and uh, we're probably gonna wrap this one up. And uh, let me show you what I've got going on. Yeah, I was um, putting this last uh, outside board on on this side right here, just right there where I have it notched in for it. And uh, I bent down to put it on and I carried it back over there by the saw and sat it down. And yeah, that's kind of hurts. I think I'm okay though. I think it's just muscle. So um, there's the front section. This is 80 inches here. Then we got the center section in here. This section from here to here is 63 inches. Then this section here is 48 and a half inches. And um, I've got the ends capped. Got it doubled on the inside. That'll give me a nice strong point here to mount the stub wall off on this side. I'm gonna put a beam across there so we can have a shorter wall right there, have some support for it. And um, in the back here, I cut a uh, big one by eight piece of cedar rough that I had, it's a full two inch and kind of threw my measurements off a little bit. I, did, I didn't measure figure for a half inch here. I mean, an extra half inch here because that's full two inch thickness. But it'll be a good sturdy piece for the back. And I notched it out so you can still see the tail lights underneath it. I'll probably end up go ahead and putting another piece across here too, because I want this a really solid place to mount my walls onto.
So, there it is. I'll go ahead and get that other piece put on over there and we'll be ready to uh, plan out the floor plan here and I'm going to lay my decking on it and from then we'll start raising the walls on it. So I really appreciate you guys coming along watching me here. Subscribe if you haven't, if you find any value in this and uh, we'll go ahead and see you guys on the next one.